brought to you by Evinrude, makers of the innovative line of E-Tech outboards and the official outboard of On The Water TV. Welcome to On The Water TV, I'm Andy Nebreski. In today's show, we're going to join On The Water's Russ Stevens as he heads up to Portland, Maine for some shark fishing action with Captain Mike Jankovic. Back in 2006, Captain Mike, along with a group of friends and fellow fishermen, founded the Casco Bay Classic, which is a primarily catch and release shark fishing tournament whose proceeds benefit the ALS Foundation. In the past two years, new state records for thresher and blue sharks were set during this tournament and thousands of dollars were raised for the ALS Foundation. Now let's head out on the water for some fast shark in action on the cold waters of Casco Bay. Hi, I'm Russ Stevens from On the Water. Today we're gonna to be fishing in the Gulf of Maine aboard the Excalibur with Captain Mike Jankovic of Maine River and Sea Charters. This is my first time shark fishing of any kind and I'm really anxious to get out there and see if I can get some beginner's luck. Well, welcome aboard, Russ. We'll go out to the Gulf into deep waters and we'll try to find some water that's 64 degrees and see what the day has to offer. All right, sounds awesome. Let's go. The chum that we're using today is ground frozen Manhattan. About how long will, uh, will a bucket like that last? Uh, well, you know, it depends on how cold it is to start with. Yep. Um, if you have a freezer that's a below zero freezer, yep. it's going to last longer yep. than if you uh, have a freezer that's you know, 17 degrees. Yep. Also, the temperature of the water depends upon it, too. If you're in 70 degree water, it's going to defrost even faster. Right now, it's 63.7. So here it goes in, invert it. Now is the use of Menhaden based on its availability or just on its superiority in terms of uh, attracting fish? Availability? Yep. Uh, it, it is a very good shark chum. Yep. I like it a lot. I really like uh, ground up herring. Yep. Blue fish is excellent. So basically any sort of uh, extra oily fish will mm -hmm. uh, provide a, a decent slick. Absolutely. Okay. This is the Mako magnet. I heard a lot about it. With alligator clips, we hook it up to the battery, and it makes a sound that I guess is supposed to mimic injured fish. Okay. But it's audible to humans above the water, huh? Eh? Uh, not when it's out of the water. Oh, it's out of the water, right? Correct. Not when it's in the water. Oh. Today we're using bluefish fillet. These are some bluefish that we caught yesterday. And out of a bluefish like this, a fillet like this, I can get two pieces of bait. That's maybe a five, six pound bluefish or something like that? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Make a nice thick chunk like this. Sometimes I take it and just slice it down there so there is some more movement yeah. in it in the water. And I just hook it right through here. Again, there's, there's nothing scientific about it yeah. or difficult. It's, the bluefish skin is pretty tough. How will that hold up over time in the water? Does it? Uh... It would last all day. Oh, would it? Yeah. Yes, it would. Yeah. Try to make sure, see how it's, things are wound up here? Yeah. Make sure you don't have any kinks. Now what I'm gonna do is just give about 75 feet of line. Okay. I'm just gonna estimate it. And how far, will the, how far beneath the balloon will the uh the chunk sink. There is a six ounce egg sinker on yeah. it, so it's okay. kind of heavy. Yeah. And even with us drifting the way we are now at about 0.9 knots, it will kite up some, yeah. but it's probably gonna end up anywhere between 50 and 60 feet. Okay. And with blue sharks, do they pull steadily? Is it a dog, dogged sort of um, straight line fight or is it a blistering run type of uh... They do make runs. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, sometimes you'll get a really big shark 
and they don't even know they're hooked. Yeah. And you'll get them right up to the boat, just yeah. tossing them in, and then they see the boat, they realize what's going on, and yeah. they're gone. And they'll sound right down to you know, a couple of hundred feet, or stay anywhere from going straight down to going right up on the surface and taking off with it. Just had our first real take. A couple of the lines have been going off on brief little runs. Only oh, pick the rod up and there's nothing there. I've had the slick out probably for about half an hour. What's the resist the drag resistance on this again? 17, 17 pounds. pounds. I am gaining on him. Yeah, I don't think it's a particularly so. big shot. Yep. We often get two sharks at the yeah, same you, time. Yeah, you do get doubles. Yeah. Which is a lot of fun. Yeah. But I just want to get these out of your way. But how big would you say that is? Six footer. Yeah. And what would a six foot shark weigh? Six foot shark would weigh about 85 pounds. Okay. And like I said, I'll grab the leader, pull him up, you'll get a good look at him. And then if he decides to run, I probably will not be able to hold him. Okay. You will have to. Wow, yeah. uh, that's a beautiful looking fish, huh? Yes. It's a full six foot blue yep. shark. Oh. Oh, there he is. He's still in. He's still in. Oh, like something popped there. Yeah, maybe hit it with his tail or he may have oh, been right, tail right. wrapped and he came off. Yeah. What I'll do the next time is uh, I have a little bracket here that I can attach the. Uh, it's going under the chum no. box. Bring it. We have to go around the other side. Yeah. I've never seen one of these blue sharks in person. It's striking the deep blue that's on the top of them. Oh, yes. Obviously, they're absolutely beautiful. On a bright sunny day, they are. Yeah. His first instinct doesn't seem to be going down to the bottom. It seems kind of more. First he was going out, now he's mm -hmm. going down. Straight so. down. Just whatever works. Well, I'll grab the leader and hook it onto here. Right. And we can get a good look at him, and hopefully with the few wags of his tail, the hook will come out. That will hold him Take a break. So you say a lot of the times when there's one at the side of the boat, another one will come and uh, kind of start swimming around it? Right, exactly. Yeah. Amazing looking animal. Okay, and I want to place the tag right behind the dorsal fin. Come on. There it goes. It's the rubber band attached to it, yeah. So what will that information, will that tag it's have on? National Marine Fisheries. And we're going to record the date, the location, yeah. the size of the shark, uh, male, female. Yeah. Can you tell? Rel yes. How can you tell what's, this what the sex? This is a male. It has two claspers okay. underneath. Which are the right. reproductive organs. Right, right, right. right. Buddy. Good.
With one shark tagged and released, Captain Mike gave me a quick demo of his shark rigging techniques. All right. I have a small wooden bead that I put on the line first, and that's to protect the top guide on the rods. So if you get a little over anxious and you're cranking in real hard, you don't run the uh, slider or the uh, snap swivel into the rod tip. It's just some protection okay. for it. These are sliders that we use to attach a balloon okay. that we'll be using for a baba. And now I'm just going to attach the line to the snap swivel again. I use a polymer knot. Yeah. Simple, easy, fast. And I notice it's got two different gauges of wire there. Right. By what I have here is I have a swivel here. Okay. And I use regular crimps. Yep. We use like the tuna fishing, and this is a 26 strand stainless steel cable. Okay. About 400 pound test. Yep. I go down approximately 10 inches to a foot and I put another crimp on it here, a little bead for a shock absorber, yep. and a six to an eight ounce egg sinker. Okay. Same thing on the other side, because I, I don't want the sinker sliding all the way down. Right. I want it to stay in one place, okay. and that's up where it's connected to the monofilament line. This cable is anywhere from 10 to 12 feet long. Okay. At the end, there's another snap, a swivel, and I tie on a single strand of wire. Okay. Regular shark leader. I think it's 174 pound test, and we tie it on with a haywire twist. Okay. And then from there, I've got a 3407 Mustad hook, 12, and that tie is tied also with. Uh, a haywire twist. Okay. That's it. Again, I'm using a balloon as a bobber. I, I don't blow it up all the way. I like to keep it so it has some stretch. Otherwise, I've tried, you know, and you don't need any more buoyancy, yeah. you know, a fraction of the buoyancy that this has to offer. The furthest balloon out is approximately 75 feet down. This one I'm going to put about 50 feet. Will one depth usually account for all the catches? Um, you know, will they, they hit the same depth repeatedly or does it vary? No, they, they tend to go for the shallower, yeah. in my experience. The last rod that I put in will be right off the boat. Okay. And that will only be about 10 feet down. 10 to 15 feet. And again, the rubber band acts as a stopper. So that it catches the slide. And when a shark hits it and runs with the bait, it will pull it. The loop will go through and the slide can, will be free to move up and down. Yeah, he took both baits, so. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he's taking pull and yeah. drag on both. Yes. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's pulling more uh, than the other. Uh, yeah, but he's pulling this one, too. Yeah. <laughs> so we may go just to two rods. Yeah. Now he stopped. Now it feels like he's trying to come up to the surface a little bit. Now, is it common that they'll come up and you can see the You'll see the dorsal come right up? Yeah. Here it comes, George. Yeah, just flashed on the surface. Right. This is a robust shark. I'm Russ Stevens. September 21st. We're out in the Gulf of Maine fishing for blue sharks today with Captain Mike Jankovic of Maine River and Sea Charters. And you're watching On the Water TV. Okay, 
Today it's been relatively easy attracting the sharks. Uh, the chum did most of the work. We have the mako magnet over the side. And we really didn't need to get into uh, using a lot of fish oil and uh, some other methods that I have for, for chunking. I use a lot of uh, cut up mackerel, herring, and bits of bluefish. In here, what I've got is a way of getting the fish oil and its manhaden oil down through the water column. What I've done, you're seeing like kitty litter here, but it's not kitty litter. Kitty litter has an odorant in it. I'm using Speedy Dry, which is an oil absorbent that is used a lot uh, in garages and so forth. What I do with it is I have about three gallons of the Speedy Dry and I put one gallon of the Manhaden oil in it and I let it soak in overnight. And the Speedy Dry then looks like this where it has absorbed all of the oil. And when I want to get the oil down through the water column, I just take it and broadcast it out and it sinks. And as it's sinking, it's releasing that fish oil so I can get it down 50, 100 feet, even 200 feet to attract sharks that may be not on the surface but further down. Another method that I use to get the sharks to hit bait when they're stubborn and they'll just stay around the boat and they don't seem to be too interested is I have crushed oyster shells. And what it is is actually a part of poultry feed that they use for chickens to, to help with their digestion. And you'll see it's just, again, cracked oysters. And when it hits the water, I'm gonna broadcast it out. It looks almost like a school, a very tiny fish. You see them going down and they don't just sink fast too. They stay for quite a while. Now of this three species, uh, threshers, makos, and blue sharks, are these thought to, uh, how is the fights different on, the, the way they fight, it's different for all three species? Yes, a, a thresher and a blue shark, to me the fight is similar. Yeah. A poor beagle and a mako, they have these power tails that enables them to make very fast, long runs, especially right. a mako. Yeah. Oh, there we go. This is still a wet we're looking for. This is a big one. Nice fish, huh? Really? Wow. Beautiful. That's eight feet overall. Yep. See why you put that uh, little rubber ball, uh, wooden stop there. Oh yeah. I've done that three or four times already. Oh wow, look at the head on that fish, huh? Yeah, look at that. Did I put it in a rod holder? Yeah, because he's fastened there. Yeah. Do you want to tag him? Just put oh, it right sorry. there. Well, okay. Darkness chased us from the fishing grounds with wow, half a dozen good. sharks still circling there the boat. Go. Well done, thank you. We brought a total of five sharks to the side of the boat and tagged them all before dust oh. set in. Oh, that was awesome. I that learned a lot really cool. from Captain Mike and had one of the most memorable fishing days of my life. I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you'd like to learn even more about fishing for sharks in New England, 
make sure you pick up a copy of On the Water magazine on a newsstand near you. I'm Andy Nebreski. We'll see you on the water. On the Water TV is brought to you by Evinrood, makers of the innovative line of e-tech outboards and the official outboard of On the Water TV.